So now from our perspective on Earth, we're looking up to see where the sun is and it's moved on. It went out of the area of the sky that we associate with the 61st hexagram, the whole arena of inner truth and reminding us to find that inner truth, to live that truth, that truth that accords with our nature. And then moved into the sign or the uh, sign of Aquarius halfway through the uh, hexagram 60 limitations and got us to have another look at where do we hold ourselves back in life? What are the blocks that are imposed or self-imposed that we have in our life? And how to find our way through? How to transcend any sense of limitation in our life? And now the sun has moved on into gateway number 41. And in traditional I Ching, the 41 is the gateway called decrease. And certainly in the northern hemisphere, we're now talking about the pits of winter and uh, resources are running low. We're still huddled around the fire. And, uh, you know, there's that whole thing of, well, you know, where are we going with life? What's going to come about? Is there, is there going to be some improvement? Is there going to be some growth? We're right at the bottom end of things is the experience, as I say, in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, it's the end of summer coming up. But uh, in that space comes about this possibility to imagine, to have a look, see, you know, where things might go. How can we rearrange things in the world in the year coming? What would we uh, put on our list of experiences? And so I call the gateway imagination. And it's really in that place that where one's potentially feeling restrained, but it's also about looking to see um, what could come about. The potential on the other end of the channel is gateway number 30, uh, which we're going to look at presently as part in the emotion center. And the whole channel between the root and the emotions now going up this other side of the chart. And the 30th gateway is the gateway called desires. In traditional Chinese, the clinging fire, what are those things that one has to go through to be fulfilled? And the 41 kind of opens up the possibility, well, this might be something I go after. This would be something that would be great to have in my life experience. We're now back in what we call the abstract circuitry, and the abstract circuitry is always trying to make sense out of life. Does life make sense? Is there any kind of a historical precedent that we can bring into the present to say, yeah, I'm on the right track here. And so the 41 is really about opening up that gateway. We could try this. This might be something fun. This might make for a good and worthwhile and fulfilling experience. And so it's a balance between the 41 opening up that doorway. And I described the 41 very much about walking the course before you ever set foot on it. It's like imagining how could we go about something or other before we actually do it. And recognizing is it a possibility or not or is it just a fantasy idea and then this whole channel this channel recognizing yeah this would be something we could put in place to bring about a further experience in the wheel we see the 41 in the top left hand corner there we are now in the astrological sign of aquarius and 30 right at the other end of aquarius and we can see in the chart in the bottom center, the root center, the 41 leading off to the right center, aiming towards the emotion center. Decrease. Imagination. And how I see imagination, it's, it's about evaluating potentials. Would this bring about a good experience? Would this be something we would modify in our lives to shift things in a different way? So it says, living within limiting resources gives occasion for dreams and fantasies to arise. And very often people with a 41 will find themselves quite visionary, quite looking out at, at the possibilities of how life can evolve and how life can move into other shapes and forms and dimensions. The other interesting thing about the 41, from our point of view with human design, is the 41 opens up the new year, the human design new year. Now, in the West, with the, with the Roman calendar, January is seen as the beginning of the year, and we make resolutions on January 1st. You know, this is the dream, this is the imagination, this is what I would like to see come about in the year ahead. This is my wish, my resolution. These are the things I'm going to do. 
And very often we find, you know, a few days into January, these resolutions have been forgotten. Occasionally we held on to them. But a much easier time to do these resolutions is when the sun goes into the 41, because this really opens up the imagination, the possibility, that thread of entering into experiences that will bring fulfillment. And uh, so from the human design perspective, yes, around somewhere between the 20th and the 22nd of January each year is when the sun goes in there. And it's a great time to actually have that meditation, have that sit down and just see, okay, what would I like to make of my life differently in the year coming? Having a look at the commentary here on the 41st hexagram. And this is saying, in the search to be fulfilled, right? And when one looks at life and you, you kind of look at the whole span of what one goes through in life, right from the very beginning, right to the end, you know, do we wish to have a legacy? Do we wish to have certain experiences in our life? And how would those come about? And it's basically the search to be fulfilled that we've tried everything, we've looked into everything, we've explored everything, we've met everybody that we felt and had felt to meet and had these extraordinary interactions with so many different situations. So it says in the search to be fulfilled, and the 41 is that doorway, that opening of possibility, look into any potential experiences that move you through a cycle from emptiness to accomplishment. Right, because the 41 is really, there's nothing there to start with, just the dream, just the possibility. And it's going to take you from the possibility into an accomplishment, take you through that full cycle of experience. Dreaming opens up the possibility to find experiences that bring satisfaction and gratefulness, or else an endless self-sustaining fantasy. So 41 can play both ways. You know, it's just that thing of seeing is the, the possibility of making a reality out of my dreams? Or is it just a fantasy, other people's ideas? And then the realization here, existence, the life, the universe was created, certainly in 3D, our 3D experience here was created when we fell in love with emptiness. Because 41 makes the move into making things happen, opening up the possibilities of things. That's what it does. It does that for all of us. So in this time when the sun goes into the 41 and it really emphasizes that part of our life and our world, great time to be putting forward the dreams and the expectations and the hopes and wishes, if you will, for what would come in the year ahead. Let's have a look at the lines. As we know, first lines always bring about the kind of foundation to any hexagram. And the line is called moderating. Finding the balance between giving and receiving. And it, it's just that thing of in the imagination, in the viewing of what might be possible, the potentials, the experiences that might open up to us. There is always that thing of finding the balance within it. What do I have to do or where do I have to place myself to be in the best possible situation for the experiences to take place? What do I have to offer myself to be able to receive? Being either centered and clear, right? I'm very clear in my imagination, very clear in my outlook, my vision, or headstrong in your handling of how to use your energies. Two different ways of going about a dream or fulfilling a dream. And here with Neptune, your creative imagination streams resources in ways that benefit yourself and others. Creative imagination, right? Expanding the envelope, going a little bit beyond what we've allowed for ourselves before seeing things differently. Why have the same old experience? Why not do something completely different? And there, you know, one of the features in the experiential circuitry in the abstract circuitry in human design is there is always more. It's an ever expanding universe, an ever expanding realm of possibilities. And with Mercury here, confusion with your role and resources leads you to, into difficulties at the outset of endeavors. There's that kind of hesitancy. Can I, can't I, will I, won't I? And it never really comes clear. There's just that overthinking, overworking it out and just seeing there's a balance here. I put in some energy and sure enough, things can be allowed to happen. The second line, being considerate, being recognized for the services you render. Anyone with the 41 will know that they have an imagination 
And, the, you know, the imagination can be absolutely straightforward and very clear, or it can be totally involved in fantasy and things that are absolutely out of the realm of possibility. But nevertheless, we can see oftentimes fantasies actually do come into reality. So the second line has this very natural approach to opening up doorways, opening up possibilities, having a strong imagination. And it says, by indulging others without diminishing yourself, you find rewards in fulfilling endeavors. Right, so it's all in there. It's just about approaching it in a very natural and straightforward way and being considerate while this is all taking place. And Saturn says you have the discipline to watch out for yourself while considering others' needs. Second lines can always get very troubled by other people's input. You know, just let me do it by myself. Let me have it my own way. Don't interrupt. And here it says you have a discipline to look after your own interests while you're considering the needs for other people as well. With the Mars energy here, by demanding attention and reward for assisting others, you eventually diminish yourself. And yeah, the second line has, very often has a genius to be able to facilitate things for other people. And especially in the arena of imagination, people have never considered something as possible. And you're saying, hey, this might be really great for you, but I need to have the reward and the recommendations, maybe uh, the fame for what it is I provide for you. And sooner or later, that ability of yours lessens. The third line, always out for an experimentation, always out for something new and different and pushing the envelope, synergizing. Experiences are fulfilled because of right alliances. And this is always a feature in the third line within any hexagram, commitment. Who and what do you commit to? What's the third line all about? Is there really the possibility to commit or is it all just too much trouble? Am I likely to get my fingers burned or get taken for granted if I get too involved? And that is the quality of the third line. So it's calling itself synergizing, finding out that mesh of who are the people that are really able to take on the vision, take on the imagination. In all your life experiences, there needs to be, there's a need to select suitable company and essential resources. It's just saying, you know, make the right commitments. Find out who's with you and who's not. Who can keep pace with you and who not. Who's up for an exciting experience? Who's looking to find fulfillment? Because the 41 can really offer that. People are looking the other way. They can't see the possibility. And the 41 says, look, here it is. It'll take you out of this place of no nothing going on into a place of complete fulfillment. And Saturn here, you enter partnerships that can endure times of separation and aloneness. Just sometimes you'll just see you're full on, totally in company, going for it. And other times you'll just see, okay, friends, yes, accomplices, yes, but we're not all involved in something at this moment in time. But sure enough, we know how to find each other and how, come, how to come back together again to make things move again. And then the moon's energy here, your, your changeable nature seeks mixed company to share in your resources and dreams. So a little bit of company here, a little bit of connection over there, so-and-so over there. So entering into all kinds of arrangements and experiences with all kinds of different people. Let's just say a great variety of entering into and committing to experiences in certain people, but then also backing away and going off and finding another group or another situation to get involved in. The fourth line, examining shortcomings. I guess it's something all of us are kind of a little reluctant to do sometimes, but here it is with the 41. You know, how much of our imagination is real and how much fantasy? And it says diminishing your poor habits increases your fortunes. And there it is. You know, what's a bad habit? What's a poor habit? A poor habit is going along with somebody else's ideas, living according to somebody else's way of life, and trying to mimic somebody else's way of being. Borrowing the rules, borrowing belief systems. Those are bad habits. And the good habits are when you start living true to yourself. I often get asked, you know, how do I make it for myself in this lifetime? You know, how do I get rich? How do I get a successful business? How do I get a successful partnership, successful life? And it all comes down in the end to being true to yourself. And I say literally according to your type, authority, profile, and life theme, being true to yourself. Because then you're in a harmony with yourself and you're in harmony with the world around you. You're not playing out somebody else's frequency. 
And sure enough, when you're in tune with yourself, the fulfillment comes. So by acknowledging what does not fulfill you, you begin to attract fresh resources and experiences. Right? The first thing is to drop the bad habits, drop the borrowed ways of doing things. You've been to a million workshops and all these different suggestions how to do something. And in the end, you've got to work out how to do it. You know, how does it work for you? Yes, you can employ some of these tactics, but in the end, it's got to be coming through you. It's got to be in that frequency. So here, the earth placement, having humility to clear up your personal problems, opens the way for assistance to come. Right? You do a little bit of therapy, you do a little bit of self-examination, a little meditation, and all of a sudden you see, oh my goodness, you know, I've cleared the decks, I've cleared the way for all kinds of complications to dissipate. And the things that I'm really looking for, as part of this imagination for where my life can really expand and go into extraordinary experiences, that assistance starts to show up. The Venus energy here, you might unrealistically expect assistance from others to rectify your own shortcomings, where you look to other people to do it for you, sort out your problems for you, without actually looking in the mirror and finding, actually, I have to do this for myself. I have to get clear about these things. And very often, you know, the 41 is aimed at the 30. The 30 is very much involved in emotion, all the ups and downs in life. And let's just say, you know, any kind of traumas that we've had in this lifetime are very often locked up in the emotion center they were caught in a wave that never actually fulfilled itself and we're stuck every time we come into some area of life that goes into that experience we get stuck in that same place and so in a sense clearing up shortcomings or getting through blockages in our life just involves in going back into that experience and finding out what were the circumstances there what was it that really happened why did I get PTSD? What was it all about? Can I allow myself to get back in there, experience the whole thing again, and then walk back out again with a whole fresh view of it? Self-healing, or very much healing that can take place by getting rid of these things that don't belong in us. The Venus energy here, you might unrealistically expect assistance. In the end, we all have to face ourselves. We all have to look at these things in our life that block us in opening up our imagination and walking into a whole new experience in life. Yeah, again, we're looking at shortcomings here. We get so far into something and that's it. We can't go any further with it because somehow or other there's this block there. The fifth line, being recognized, inner clarity ensures rewards. Fifth line, you know, Living in a projection field of everybody else's ideas of the imagination or the fantasy or the possibilities or the doorways or the experiences that the fifth line can open up. And sure enough, the fifth line can do that. It can open up all kinds of possibilities. Wow, I didn't know I could do that. You're suggesting I do this. Inner clarity ensures rewards. So, you know, the fifth line has to have that inner clarity. Yeah, I can offer all these different things. People are coming at me with all kinds of different, you know, can you do this for me, do that for me? And the fifth line really has to say, yeah, I can do all of this stuff, but I have to come from me first. I have to recognize this is something that wants to come through me, working with you or playing with you or whatever. There has to be that clarity inside. Sure enough, people will recognize the 41 with the fifth line in somebody because, yeah, this person's really good at opening up possibilities, new experiences, clearing things. You observe how you and others deal with constraints whether you find completion or not. Again, there's a little edge of therapy in here, like clearing up things, getting blockages out of the way so that experiences can take place that ultimately we find fulfillment in our lives. With the Mars energy here, you push to clarify the essential attitudes that will promote your fullness of purpose. Sometimes one just has to go for it. One has to follow the dream. One has to see it through. Oh, but I can't really see where I'm going. There has to be that level of trust. The imagination showed up. The image was seen. The vision was shown as a possibility. And there it is. The fulfillment is the completion of that or moving towards it in a way that brings that promise of fulfillment. The, the Venus side of it, you tend to see a half glass, half full glass as half empty. Right? You know that story of the, is a glass half full or half empty? How do you see it? 
and here the tendency to see a half full glass as half empty, despite your own abilities to replenish it. And again, there's that whole thing of what's the vision? How do I penetrate through whatever blockages I might have set up to fulfill that vision? And then we come to the sixth line of being fulfilled. Bringing benefits to others while expanding your own resources. Always the sixth line has the overview of the whole arena of imagination. Probably a very, very powerful imagination, sense of fantasy, sense of all kinds of things. The gifts that can be offered in life. And there's that whole sense in the end of the day of being really fulfilled, of being able to provide things for other people at the same time, provide things for yourself that always bring about enriching experiences. You enrich everyone around you through your inner watchfulness and your selective ways. Yeah, it's quite possible the, the imagination with the 41 is, is unending, cornucopia of possible life experiences. Yes, there are certain limits within the human possibility, but we're always seeking to expand on these things, to try different things, you know, to fly, to swim, to dive, go into all these different experiences in life. And at the end of the day, the experience either appeals to us, it brings us that sense of fulfillment and accomplishment or not. And the thing with anything in the abstract circuitry and the sensing circuitry is about you only ever need to do an experience once. It's done. And that is the nature of the 41 is outlining which experiences are really worth pursuing. The 30 will see it. You know, that channel of 4130 will focus you. OK, I'm going for it. I'm clear to do this have this experience. And in the 30th gateway called the clinging fire, the, the going through the experience, there is a purification that takes place. So we can see the value of in the first place, getting the dream, getting the vision that I really want, you know, I've got this life, I've got a time span in this life, I've got certain potentials and seeing the possibility of the dream and then focusing, going for it. And coming out the other side of the experience and just say, wow, done it. Feather in my cap, new sense of accomplishment, new sense of fulfillment. Wow, I am really living my life. It can be in the most complicated things of physical experiences. It can be in the simplest things about inviting somebody to tea and just having a really great experience with them. It can be these extremes of things, but it's just... What we're always looking for in life is the sense of fulfillment. I played my part to the full. You enrich everyone through your inner watchfulness and your selective ways. Who merits what? Which experiences are really worth accomplishing? The Saturn side of things, your disciplined view enhances your own resources and also brings in expansion for others. Now, it's just about looking at the thing clearly. In this situation, what's the experience that's being offered? Where does the vision need to go? What can I point out to somebody that can really give them benefit in their life? The other side of things with Pluto, you tend to avoid public attention, but have the power to shift constraints into great gains. The people that are the real visionaries on the planet, they have this extraordinary gift of seeing things that other people can't necessarily see. They have the imagination, they have the then the courage to follow through on it, the clarity to proceed with it. And sure enough, you know, they'll bring great benefits in their own life, but surely they will expand benefits in terms of fulfillment and experience and accomplishment into the lives of many, many people around them. And the world always has a great place for the visionaries. And that is naturally what the, what the fourth to first hexagram is all about, is exploring the vision, expanding the envelope, living life to the fullest and there